Are you having pain with the ATG split squat? A lot of people will experience medial knee pain or pain on the inside of the knee, pain at the patellar tendon or pain in the lateral portion of their knee when they're doing a split squat. Now the common advice that you'll receive is always to regress the movement to a non-painful form, which I'm 100% an advocate for. This is the easiest solution to reduce your pain. However, it is not the only solution to reduce your pain, as many people will still have pain with this sort of movement. Hi, I'm Greg Scheibe with SportsRehabExpert.com. Today we're going to be talking about some specific technique adjustments that you're going to want to make to the ATG split squat if you're experiencing pain, or at least focal points that you'll want to pay attention to to make sure you're doing it correctly from a biomechanic standpoint. So oftentimes, if you're experiencing pain, if you pay attention to the biomechanics, you can actually do the exercise more comfortably. In many instances, work the exercise more aggressively without ever experiencing pain in the first place. So it's important to still be very particular about the biomechanics and the technique behind the exercise so that you don't feel like you always need to regress the activity. Now I'm all for bulletproofing your body and trying to make you the most resilient individual possible where you don't have to necessarily be worried about your form and technique being 100% spot on all the time. I think too many people are overly focused on form and feel that form needs to be 100% perfect every single rep that you do before advancing an exercise. And I think that perfect movement mantra actually just doesn't exist and actually prevents a lot of people from improving. But we still need to understand there is a minimum technical proficiency for an exercise to be done in a safe manner. Now the biggest mistake that I see people make is when they try to push their knee as far forward as they can, they don't track the knee directly over top of their shoelaces. Meaning sometimes their knee will be inward relative to their foot and their hip. We want to keep that knee in a nice straight line. Your hips are headlights pointing straight towards the camera in this instance. And for people who really struggle with their ankle mobility, a lot of times they're focusing on their ankle so much and pushing their knee so far forward ahead, what you'll notice is the ankle bone on the inside actually collapsing inwards and they're putting so much pressure through the big toe that again, the knee turns inward and you get this gapping effect at the actual knee joint itself and a compressive effect on the lateral aspect side of the knee. So again, you should feel whole foot pressure pressure through the whole entire foot, keep these ankle bones level as you travel straight forward, forward over top of your knee. So from a biomechanic perspective, that is what you're looking at is that the ankle bone stays level, the knee is tracking straight over top of your foot, and there's not this kind of awkward twist that's happening at the foot or the hips. The other way I like to think about this exercise is that as your knee comes forward, this middle portion of your foot should feel just like a spring or just like a trampoline where you're putting pressure straight down through the center of that foot. If you put too much pressure and emphasis on the big toe, again, see how that collapse on the inside of the ankle happens and the knee wants to torque inward. Too much emphasis on the big toe is a mistake that I'll see a lot of people make. The emphasis should be right on the dead center of your midfoot, in that aspect feeling like coiling down of a spring, straight down into the bench in front of you, and a lot of times, again, that lines you up in a more biomechanic, advantageous way that oftentimes will take your pain away. Now, there is some other considerations that we may need to take in place, whether you have uh, more of a knock knee presentation, or if you have more of a bow legged presentation, there are some other circumstances that adjustments may need to be made. Or no matter what you try here, you still may be experiencing pain. Feel free to reach out to me at greg at sportsrehabexpert.com and we can set up an online session to work out specific technique issues, but then also talk about other exercises you should and can be doing to help you improve the ATG split squat and make it more comfortable with less pain. One final thing that I want to mention with this exercise is that the surface you do this on does make a difference. So the softer the surface, the more the surface gives. This is still a pretty firm bench, 
but some people will use really, really soft benches. And what that does is the softness and the cushion of the bench creates this collapse of the inside ankle bone again, where we're not keeping this level to keep the nice alignment moving forward. So sometimes the surface of the bench that you're doing this on or the object you're doing this on is not helping you if you're doing it on a soft surface. So that's just another consideration that you may want to take in place when you're trying to do these activities at home.